From inside the Bob Devaney Center in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's Big Ten Women's Gymnastics here on Big Ten Plus. The Nebraska Huskers hosting the Terrapins of Maryland in what typically would be a sea of red flooded with pink for the annual Stick It to Cancer meet. And hi, everyone. We're so glad you joined us alongside the former all Big Ten Oscar gymnast, Kenzie Roby. I'm Jessica Cooty, and it is a special meet here tonight with the Stick It to Cancer meet, the annual pink meet. We've got pink Leos, pink pom-poms for the fans honoring cancer survivors. We're rocking our pink as well, but there's a big gymnastics battle at the heart of all of it. Let's start with the Huskers coming off a win last week in their second timeout. This will be their third timeout here tonight, but posting a 196.15 last week. How can Nebraska build off of that here tonight? Yeah, well, that was a really great score last week, and I think this week they really need to go out and focus on hitting every single routine. That way they can count those best scores towards that team score. And for Maryland, they're coming off a season in which they qualified for an NCAA regional. They have a ton of experience coming back, and it showed in their opening meet last week, hitting 24 routines last week. Yeah, that's really great to go out there and be able to hit every single routine. They also have quite a few returners. So they've got 17 returners on that team, 11 of them upperclassmen, which really helps to have that depth and that experience out there on the floor. Well, it's all about the team score, right? But we do have a fun all-around battle to keep track of here tonight. A couple of Huskers that will be competing in the all-around in Sophia McClellan and Emma Spence. And then for Maryland, Emma Silverman. And she's capable of putting up some big scores. Yeah, it's always fun to have those all-arounders out there. They contribute on all four events. So definitely adding to that team score. And one thing to note, too, is that, you know, Emma has been really consistent for the Huskers. And this is Actually, for Sophia, her first time out there competing all around, so it'll be great to see. Fantastic crowd on hand, giving the snow. You were a little bit worried driving in. Yes. Never uh, doubt Husker fans. True, very true. It's good to see so many people here. Well, so to start this thing off here on the first rotation, the Huskers will start off on the vault, and the Terrapins will be on the bars. One thing to note for Nebraska is that they will be without Asia Hall tonight. So some changes in the lineup in that regard. She's in the vault lineup, and then she leads off on typically on floor and Beam, right? So how can the Huskers look to fill that void tonight? Yeah, so one thing to note is that it's very early in the season and it's a long season. So if an athlete may have any type of injury, then it's good to kind of let them rest and try and fill that lineup with some other athletes and kind of test that depth that they have. Yeah, just a, a tweak to uh, Asia and, and hopefully she won't be out for very long, but as you mentioned, always good to get the experience for some of these other athletes. You'll see the uh, Huskers wearing those pink Leos, and they are new this year. How much do you love those? Yes, they look amazing. I, I truly love them. So this is, all, again, all in honor of the uh, Stick It to Cancer meet, the pink meet, and honoring cancer survivors. The team went and visited Bryan Medical Center. Tell us about that and what that, what that is like as, a, as an athlete to get to be a part of something like this. Yeah, well, it's always good to go out and be able to give back. And I know that the team really appreciates doing any of those volunteer activities like that. It's always good for the team and everyone that they're doing it for. And how much uh, do you guys get excited when you put those pink Leos on, the new ones especially? Oh, it is always so much fun. And I know that one of the favorite things is getting to see those new Leos for the first time. And actually, some of the gymnasts do get to contribute and draw up their own Leo designs. So sometimes the Leos that you're seeing, the athletes have actually designed them themselves. That's amazing. So leading off for the Huskers, uh, we have talked a little bit about Sophia McClellan. She is a transfer from BYU, a junior, and 
She is competing in the all-around, had never competed in the all-around collegiately before she became a Husker, before she came here to Lincoln, and had never competed on vault. It had been three or four years uh, as a collegiate gymnast. She, it was dating back to club since she did vault. And so the home opener, the home meet, the first uh, meet of the season, she is leading off on vault and hadn't done it in three or four years. And she mm -hmm. said she was so nervous, was freaking out a little bit, but she loves her new teammates. They rallied around her and said, hey, you got this. You're in this spot for a reason. Yeah, that's always so great to see. And I think that, you know, going out there and doing all four events, the first meet of the season, that can be a lot of pressure. And she definitely handled it really well and really established herself. And hopefully that gave her a really good confident boost. Uh, Heather Brink, head coach for Nebraska, called her a spark plug. And um, she has been a welcomed addition to this Nebraska women's gymnastics team. Let's talk a little bit about Maryland too because boy they've got you, you mentioned it a lot of familiar faces a lot of experience on a team that made it to the postseason and they had a great meet last week hit all 24 of their routines how hard is that to do in the opening meet that's that is quite an accomplishment it's definitely always good to go out there and be able to hit every single routine and especially to do that early on in the season that is a great goal and they definitely accomplished that and are probably looking to do it again tonight so for Maryland, for Maryland, um, I was uh, paying attention to the clap. I was like, what's going on down there? What am I missing? Uh, but for Maryland, we'll, we'll see how the lineup shakes out because they did have a couple injuries as well. So Elizabeth DeBarberry had a tweak to her ankle in warm-ups last week and potentially could see a, a lineup change in that regard here to start things off in bars. Yeah, I mean, that's something that every single athlete has to kind of get used to that feeling. That's something that's different in college is, you know, six athletes compete and that seventh person could get called to go in for the lineup if anything happens. So definitely, you know, it keeps you on your toes to be ready to compete. Going back to Nebraska again without Asia Hall in the lineup, they're just going to have five gymnasts competing on vault. What does that do? How important is it for every uh, athlete to deliver here? Yeah, that definitely adds a little bit more pressure when it's five up, five count. But one thing that the athletes try to focus on is just doing their own gymnastics. I think that's really important and something that every athlete tries to focus on is to really stay in their own bubble, you know, they, of course, want to go out and do their best routine and, you know, hit it for, for their team. So final uh, moments of warm-ups here before we get this started. Again, a great crowd still filing in. A lot of youngsters. They got the pink pom-poms that they're handing out. The Huskers will be signing autographs after the meet as well. How much did you guys love to look up and see all the little girls uh, watching and, and being inspired by what you're doing down there? Yeah, that's always amazing to see. And all those young gymnasts, I know they look up to those athletes so much, and it's really cool to see. So here in the early goings of the season, uh, tell us a little bit about the judging and what they're looking for. And, I mean, are they going to be pretty critical here in the early goings of the season and as the scores build as we get move along throughout an, an entire gymnastic season? Yeah, well, you know, going into those first meets, they're definitely looking for those details. So body positions in the air, stuck landings, those are all going to be really important. And while they may seem like minor details, every 10th counts and – Obviously, you know, you want to minimize those deductions, so. All right, so we have got a fired up crowd here inside the Devaney Center leading things off for the Huskers on vault. Sophia McClellan was uh, let off here the first couple of meets, no change there for the Huskers. She had a, a 9.65 in there last week career high 9.75 in the season opener against Arkansas back on January 7th. And she loves this role, being in the leadoff here yes. for the Huskers. And Sophia should be doing a Yurchenko full twist for her ball. How important is the leadoff role? What, what are you looking for in this role? Well, you want somebody that's really consistent, that you know you can count on, and that also helps calm down the rest of that lineup. 
So here is Sophia McClellan getting things going here tonight. A good Yurchenko fold, a little hop forward. So one thing the judges will look for is that hop back, but it was a good start. Good through the air, just the, the landing? Just, yeah, just that little chest position on the landing. All right, so over to bars for Maryland. Leading things off is Rhea LeBlanc, sophomore out of Waltham, Massachusetts. Last week, she had a 9.675, her career high, a 9.75. Here she goes, mounting underneath the bar. Catches that first release move. That was a Jaeger in the piked position. A good transition to the low bar there. And now just getting ready for that dismount. And a stuck double layout. Definitely a great routine for Maryland to start off their bar rotation. And that is uh, Rhea LeBlanc in the leadoff there for the Terrapins. Sophia McClellan led things off for the Huskers with a 9.675. So up next now for the Huskers is Katie Keeneman. Sophomore out of Longview, Texas. And a good vault from Katie. She did that Yurchenko full again. Saw that little hop on the landing, but good position in the air. A good block off the table, all good things to see. You see Katie wearing that pearl ribbon. That is a special ribbon for her. Some of the athletes here tonight, and again, honoring the cancer awareness, having the different ribbons for different cancers of different people in their lives that are special to them. Moving back over to the bars, this is Victoria Gatzendorfer, who has a connection to the Huskers. She is best friends with Kenzie Davis. They were club teammates. Yes, that's always good to be able to, you know, have that friendly competition and compete with somebody that is a familiar face. Transfer from Missouri. Kenzie gave me all the background. She uh, has a sister that was a cheerleader at Maryland. Grew up a Maryland fan, so dream come true for her to be competing for the Terrapins. And those were two good transitions from Victoria there. A great last handstand, getting ready for that dismount. And another stuck landing, great to see. And that team celebration, always good to see. Another great routine. Right, so for Maryland on the bars, she led things off. Rhea LeBlanc, LeBlanc with a 9.725. Katie Kneeman for the Huskers had a 9.775. So following up at 9.675 from Sophie McClellan. So here we go back to the vault and Martina Comeen. A beautiful Yurchenko full stuck landing. You can see she's so happy about that and so is the team. That is definitely gonna be a good score for Martina. And one thing that Martina is also capable of is that 10-0 start value. So a Yurchenko one and a half, but it is early on in the season, so we might see that later on. And again, coming off an injury, right? Try to maybe come back a little slowly, get her back fully healthy. But this is the most healthy yes. that she's felt in her career here, right? Definitely, and you know, it's always important to pace those athletes throughout the long season. So the score for Victoria Gatzendorfer, a 9-8 for Maryland up next is, who do we have here? Did we, uh, we have, because this was the, where we might have had a change in the lineup. Yes, so. Here we go, it is, it's Elizabeth DeBarberry. She was 
had an ankle injury. They were going to see how she uh, dealt with the dismount. We'll see how it is. Pretty good. That was a great double layout and a good routine from Elizabeth. Yes, yeah, so they were going to see how warm-ups went to see how they were going to shake out that lineup. So, she, But uh, Coach Stonis, boy, she's a tough kid, and she wants to be in there so bad for her team. Yes, of course. A 9.85 for Martina Comeen. Great score. And here is Kinsey Davis. Another Yurchenko full. Really good. Just a small hop on that landing. Kinsey coming off where she matched a career high last weekend with a 9-9. I know she was proud of that. Definitely. It's always good to see those high scores. Next up for Maryland on the bars is Sierra Kondo, the sophomore out of Saratoga Springs, New York. Get in what looks like a little pep talk from the bar coach, it's always good beforehand. Kind of gives you that last little boost of confidence right before you go. Another 9-8 for Maryland from uh, Elizabeth DeBarberry. So 9-8, 9-8, for the Terrapins to start off. And good routine so far. Definitely looking to continue those hit routines. Great handstand to start off the routine. And a beautiful Jaeger to bail connection there. Another good handstand. And a double layout dismount. Slight hop on the landing, but overall another good routine. Serious career high is a 9.925. So certainly capable of putting up the big scores there. All right, moving back over to the vault. Here is Emma Spence, another one of those all-arounders for the Huskers, the sophomore competed in every meet last year on the all around for the Huskers. Amazing to see. And Emma is also capable of that Yurchenko one and a half. And she does it and sticks the landing. Amazing to see from Emma Spence. That stuck landing there. As you could see in the air, just a slight bend in the knees, but the angle that the judges have could be a little bit different than ours, so it'll be interesting to see what they give that score. So Kinsey Davis had a 9.825 for the Huskers before Emma Spence, and again, five up, five count for the Huskers. They're only uh, gonna have five gymnasts go on vault here tonight. Back over to the bars is Emma Silberman, another gymnast in the all-around tonight. She's a senior out of New Hope, Pennsylvania, and this is someone who's had an incredible career. Started her career as a walk-on, earned a scholarship, competed in the all-around, has been a big part of this program. And actually, last year had a school record 9.950 on the bars. Oh, here she goes, mounting the bar. A Ginger for her release move. Solid so far. Hitting those handstands, getting ready for her dismount now. Another double layout, just a slight hop on the landing. And how about a 9-9 nine, nine for Emma Spence? That is a career high for her on the vault. That, that was amazing. It was great to see that Yurchenko one and a half, 10-0 start value. And up next on the vault is gonna be freshman Caitlin Barth. Doing a Yurchenko full. A little stumble on the landing. I believe this is Caitlin's first time competing. Is this an exhibition? 
that was the sixth so this, person. So they are going to have, they did have six gymnasts there. Yes, okay. they did. I think that they maybe put her in that lineup. I did see her warming up during that warm up period. So okay, it's always good to see the freshmen get out there for the first time. That is awesome. Because originally when I talked to Heather Brink, she had told me that she thought that they would just be five gymnasts, five counts. So she yes. uh, making the adjustments. That's what's uh, crazy about gymnastics is sometimes you can see how warm-ups go and decide to change that lineup last minute. Yeah, for sure. So here is Aleka Chiknias, a senior out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, anchoring the bars for Maryland. Another under the bar mount there. Good handstand. Solid release move. That was a Jaeger. In transition to the low bar. A good routine so far. Going to try and hit that handstand. And a double layout for the dismount. She tried to hold on to that landing there. So Emma Silverman had a 9.675 for Maryland. We'll see the final score here. For Caitlin, Barth had a 9.6 there. And here is an exhibition on bars for Maryland. Yeah, so for that exhibition spot, just to explain that a little bit, the rotation has six athletes up in that seventh person can show their routine get a little experience and also the judges will score the routine but it cannot count towards the team score it's more just to give that athlete a little bit more experience performing their routine in front of a crowd and to get some of those jitters out Waiting for that final uh, score to come in officially for Maryland on the bars. From Aleka Chiknias. What's the value in doing these exhibitions for some of these uh, athletes and for the coaches to get to see them in a live performance in front of a crowd? Yeah, well, it can be like I said, like a really good experience just to get out there doing your routines in front of a crowd that always adds a little bit of nerves and to, you know, be able to hit that routine kind of shows the coaches too that they can depend on you, which she definitely does there, a great routine. So the 9775 for Alec in that final spot for the Terrapin. So after rotation number one, Nebraska with the lead, 49 Point zero zero oh two five and Maryland with a 48.85. Mm -hmm. How did you like that first rotation for Nebraska there on the vault? Yeah, I think that they had a really solid start on the vault. Kind of going to go back and highlight that Yurchenko one and a half from Emma Spence stuck landing and a score of a 9.9. .9. A great vault and overall they definitely went out there and did six for six, which is good to see. All right, so rotation number one in the books again. 49.025 for Nebraska there after the vault rotation. Maryland 48.85 for the team score. So we will move to rotation number two with Nebraska moving over to the bars and Maryland moving over to the vault. You're watching Big Ten, Big Ten Gymnastics here on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back inside the Devaney Center. Alongside Kenzie Roby, I'm Jessica Cootie. Heading into rotation number two with uh, Nebraska heading over to the bars and Maryland on the vault. Did want to talk a little bit more about some of these athletes and, and the ribbons that they're wearing. So Emily Frost is wearing a yellow ribbon for a little girl named Ella who was at her gym growing up. She uh, passed away actually uh, last year at the age of 13. We had osteosarcoma was diagnosed when she was just 10 years old. It was one of the girls on the team that she coached. And then uh, Sophia McClellan, who will be leading off here on bar, she's wearing a burgundy ribbon, and that is for a, a male uh, athlete here, gymnast here at Nebraska, uh, Asher Cohen, his father, Matt Cohen. And then we also have uh, Katie, who is wearing her pearl ribbon for Miss Kathy uh, from her club, Texas East Gymnastics. Miss Kathy was the mom of Stacy, who again helped build that gym into the gym that it is. And so really special to these athletes to be again representing for some of these people that have battled. And, and that's what's kind of special about this pink night here tonight. For sure. Always, uh, you never know what's uh, motivating somebody behind these athletes, right? Yeah, so many players that kind of go into the team and get them to where they're at today. You know, there's a cancer survivors in attendance here tonight and the ice stand for and uh, across all sports here at Nebraska, they do this special night. So we are uh, excited to be a part of it here tonight. All right, so leading things off on the vault for Maryland will be Taylor Reck and she is in this spot here in the lineup for Maryland for Elizabeth DeBerry, who again is out uh, with that tweaked ankle. And again, both teams just getting those final words of encouragement before this rotation kicks off. Taylor Reck, the freshman out of Milton, Georgia, leading things off for the Terrapins. And she starts off with a Yurchenko full, a slight hop on the landing, but a great way to start the rotation. How about a freshman in the leadoff spot? Yeah, that's good to see. It's it's a lot of pressure, but she's handling it well. So over to the bars for the Huskers. Leading things off is Sophia McClellan, who again led things off in the vault and competing in the bars for the first time here in her collegiate career <laughs> this yes. season. She's in that all-around competition. Won the all-around last week for the Huskers. And a good handstand to start off her routine. Going into her release move, she catches her Jaeger a little close to the bar, but she hits that next handstand. Transition down to the low bar there. The last thing that she just needs to do is hit her dismount. A double layout stuck landing. Look how fired up her teammates are. Great to see. That's always so exciting. And one thing with that stuck landing, that's the last thing the judges are going to see for that routine. So it's really important to make that final mark. Taylor Reck led things off for Maryland with a 9.75 on the vault. Next up is, is this Emma Silverman back up? Or is this Reese McClure? I believe that should be Reese McClure. Okay, Reese McClure here up next for Maryland. Another good Yurchenko full. We're just seeing some slight hops on the landing. A great body position in the air, though. It's always good to see. And here is Genesis Gibson, sophomore out of Prosper, Texas for Nebraska. Genesis gets her bar routine going. Doing that transition up to the high bar and then back down to the low bar. She does that successfully. And getting ready for that dismount. Should be another double layout. Couple 
steps there on that landing, but overall a good routine. So 9.65 for Sophia McClellan in the leadoff spot for the Huskers. 9.725 for Reese McClure for Maryland. And this is Josephine Kogler. A good Yurchenko full. She got a really good block off the table. As you can see there, getting that height. Little hop on the landing. So one thing for those landings too, it's really important to try and spot the ground and absorb the landing. You see some athletes bouncing out and that comes just with the experience, you know, getting out there and competing. It's early on in the season. So trying to really focus in on that as the season continues. Next up for the Huskers is Emma Simpton, the sophomore out of Prosper, Texas. She's in the bars lineup for the first time this season back in the bars rotation. Yes, I know Emma has done that exhibition spot a few times and she's worked her way back to the lineup. So here she goes, getting ready to start her routine. Nine six for Genesis Gibson for the Huskers on the bars. Emma does her transition up to the high bar and back down to the low bar. And getting ready for that dismount here. Emma will also do a double layout dismount. And she pulls it around, slight chest down and a little hop, so the judges will have to deduct for that. Back over to the vault is Emma Silberman for Maryland. She had a 9.675 on the bars, again competing in the all around here tonight. In a great vault, she does a round off entry and then a full twist onto the table to then flip off in a pretty good landing. Next up for the Huskers on the bars will be Emma Spence, the sophomore out of Ontario, Canada. So again, competes in the all around. I asked her what her favorite event was. She told me her favorite event to train is the bars, but her favorite event to compete is the floor. But this is what she likes to do when she's practicing. Yeah, it can definitely change just depending on the, the pressure that you have during the meet. And here Emma Spence goes starting her bar routine. Good Hanson on the low bar. Beautiful transitions, and she actually connects that toe handstand to another transition back up to the high bar. Just going into her dismount here, double tuck. A good landing, slight hop there, but good routine from Emma Spence. Emma Simpton had a 9.55 before Emma Spence for the Huskers. And back over to the vault is Alexa Aleka Rothenbusher, the junior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Alexa had a 9-8 on the vault last week in the opener for Maryland. In a great vault. Stuck landing on that too. So 9875 for Emma Silverman just before Alexa. Good scores. And as we see there, Maryland is definitely excited for that vault. Next up on the bars for the Huskers will be Clara Colombo. Senior out of Italy, 
you know the Huskers, you know she's the first ever Italian gymnast to compete in the NCAA. And Martina became the second. Yes. Your teammates, your former teammates. For sure. And I know that with Clara coming in, I think that kind of helped Martina out a little bit to make that transition. So Clara competed on the bars at the uh, NCAA Regional last April, had a 9-9 on the event last year, the postseason. She was a Big Ten gymnast to watch heading into this season. And this can be a great routine. Clara is a phenomenal bar worker. One thing to note too, right as she starts her routine, look at her hand placement on the bar. She does what's called an L grip. Beautiful release move, doing a pack salto down to the low bar. And now getting ready for her dismount. Again, she's gonna do that L grip as you see right there with her hands. And a double front half out sticks the landing. An amazing routine from Clara. What's unique about that grip? Well, as you can see, you know, her hand placement on the bar, that's extremely difficult to do. It takes a lot of flexibility. And back over to the vault for Maryland. This is Alexis Rubio, graduate student. A good Yurchenko full, another stuck landing. We're starting to see some more of those, which is great to see. Good position in the air. She holds on to that landing too. So Rothenbusher before had a 9.825. So we'll see how that final score comes in for Alexis Rubio for the Terrapins. And anchoring things on the bars for the Huskers is Kinsey Davis. She is one of the best bar workers in the country, right? Ability-wise, potential she has potential to uh, get a perfect 10 on this event. Absolutely. Last year, scoring a 9975. So every time Kinsey Davis goes out there, she is definitely chasing that perfect 10. That's a goal of hers this year. Here she goes. Good handstand to start off. And she's changing her routine just slightly there. She should have connected those skills. A little close on that release move. Good transition down to the low bar. The last thing Kinsey Davis has to do here is her dismount, a double layout. A slight hop. So one thing, like I mentioned, she kind of had to change her routine a little bit there, and that's something that you have to do really quick, and she was able to fight through on that routine, which is good to see. 9875 for Rubio. This will be an exhibition for Maryland. We have an exhibition for Nebraska as well coming up here. Clara Columba with a 975 on bar. So we're waiting to see Kinsey Davis, the final score on that. So when you're changing up the routine like that, when you're talking about, do you lose points for that or start value points? How does that work? Not necessarily. It all depends kind of on what the athlete does in that spur of the moment decision, but it can be challenging. You know, you, you gotta be quick on your feet, which she definitely did to finish out her routine. And up on the bars for exhibition is Chang'e. She is a freshman. She's competed in the bars. She's been in the lineup before, right? Yes, she has. So just an exhibition today, so her score will not be counted towards a team score. Double layout dismount, step on the landing. In 
So a 9-5-7-5 for Kenzie Davis to close things out on the bars for Nebraska. So 48-3-5 on the bars for Nebraska. And for Maryland, they had a great rotation on the vault, 49-1-2-5. Yes, definitely good scores from Maryland. Those are all good vaults, and they definitely are going to be happy with that rotation. So we've got a close one here. 97-975 for Nebraska, 97-375 for, I'm sorry, that was for Maryland, 97-975 for Maryland and 97-375 for Nebraska. All right, we can move to the third rotation as Maryland will move to the floor and Nebraska will move to the balance beam. So keep it right here. You're watching Nebraska Gymnastics here on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back inside the Devaney Center. Alongside Kenzie Roby, I'm Jessica Cootie. We head to rotation number three with Maryland leading Nebraska 97.975 to 97.375. So take us through both floor and vault, or floor and beam, what the judges are looking for to add up those points. Yeah, well, for starting off on the beam, you want to see those solid routines, kind of minimizing those wobbles. You want to be really confident up there. And of course, sticking the landing and then over on the floor it's not only about the gymnastics but also that performance aspect so really showing off those routines and showing off those tumbling passes as well it's a whole performance aspect we spoke with uh, brett nelligan before the meet and he loves the floor routines out of his team this season yes some entertaining routines coming up from the terrapins Leading things off on the beam for the Huskers will be Emma Simpton. Is that right? Yes, and okay. I believe Emma was in the lineup last week. Yeah, so she she got an opportunity last week, and uh, Heather Brink said she did a great job, did a solid routine, and then was consistent throughout the week, so earned the spot to start here on beam because normally, again, this is Asia Hall that leads things off on the beam. Yeah, so this will be a great opportunity for Emma to once again prove it not only to herself, but to the coaches as well, that she can handle this pressure in the leadoff spot. And a beautiful triple series from Emma Simpton. That was a back handspring, back handspring layout step out. And she is looking very solid throughout this whole routine so far. Had a 9.875 last week, which is a share of the beam title. A good jump series. That was a split jump into a ring jump. One thing that the judges look for in that is that position in the air. A dismount, gainer full off the side of the beam, and a good routine from Emma Simpton to start off Nebraska's beam rotation. Again, how important is it to hit the first one for a team? It definitely helps. It can kind of calm down the rest of those athletes, and that first person up showing that they can do it kind of gives you that confidence that they can do it as well. So over to the floor and leading things off for Maryland is Taylor Reck, the freshman out of Milton, Georgia. Going into her first pass here, front double twist. And going right into her second pass now, a double back, a great landing there. see that leap pass. One thing the judges look for in that is that the athlete is hitting those positions in the air. So whether that's a split or a straddle, you want to have that complete 180 degrees. And Taylor's getting ready for her last tumbling pass. Round off back one and a half to a front layout. Good landing. And a good routine to lead things off for Maryland. Speaking of that leadoff spot, 9775 for Emma Simpton in that leadoff spot for the Huskers. A good start. Great start for their beam rotation. Next up for Nebraska is Chengate. Okay, you say it. Okay. Bachke. Yes. Bachke. <laughs> there we go. Chengate Bachke. We had to double check it there at the beginning. Freshman out of Budapest, Hungary. There's four different countries represented on this Husker team. And Chenge also did that triple series by cancering step out, by cancering step out, layout step out. 
And with that triple series, the athlete also gets an extra connection bonus. And there was her leap series there. So with that, for every routine, the athlete has to work their score up to a 10. So all of the skills that they're doing are for a purpose. That way they can get that uh, start value of a 10.0. I think he had a 9-8 in the home meet against Arkansas. Going into her dismount, round off double twist. She tried to hold on to that landing. I think there was a slight hop. But another hit routine that's going to be key for Nebraska during this beam rotation is hitting those routines. So Taylor Reck led things off for Maryland with a 9-7-5. And up next is Emma Silverman. Oh, nope, this is Ray LeBlanc. Here she goes, going into that first tumbling pass. Front hand spring double twist. Is able to spot the floor on there. Control her landing. Now going into her second tumbling pass. Back one and a half to front layout. And you can see those mats that are on the floor there. Those are allowed. Gymnasts will use them sometimes to kind of help soften the landing, protect those ankles. Finishes her leap pass. And Rhea's going into her final tumbling pass. A front handspring front one and a half, a good controlled landing there. And another good routine for Maryland. A 9.775 for Change to follow up the 9.775 from Emma Simpton. And next up for the Huskers is Allie Gard, the freshman out of Round Rock, Texas, transfer from Arkansas. She just got here in December. And, boy, this team has really welcomed her in. It's been a great fit for her. And uh, that's a quick turnaround to get here in December and then find yourself in a lineup and, and trying to get settled in and acclimated. It definitely is. And especially as a freshman, you have so many adjustments to make, not only on the gymnastics side of things, but being a college student and in the classroom as well. And... Allie's starting her beam routine. A little wobble there on her series. Able to hold on to it, though. A good full turn. A jump series there. Split jump, split three quarter. Was a side aerial, another little wobble there. Allie should be getting ready for her dismount now. A switch leap into a gainer pike off the beam and a stuck landing. So overall, another hit routine, but she had those slight wobbles in there, so the judges will have to take a couple tenths off for that. But fighting to stay on the beam, that's an important that's thing, right? That's definitely important. You never want to have to count a fall. Back over to the floor, we had a 98.25 from Rhea LeBlanc for the Terrapins, and now we will see Taylor Osterhout. Junior out of Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. Finishes up that first pass. I do believe she went out of bounds. So just a little too much power on that first pass.
showing off her routine as she gets ready for her next pass. Which was a double pike, much more controlled on that landing. And another hit routine for Maryland on the floor. When will we know if she went out of bounds? And I guess when the score comes in? I believe she did. I think I saw the judge raise her hand. And that, if they can see it, then <laughs> I think that means that she did. So 965 for Ali Gard, and next up will be Clara Colombo. Clara had the 975 on bars. Clara starting off her beam routine. One thing I love about Clara's beam, she's getting ready for her series here, is how much she shows off her dance. She is a beautiful performer. You can really see that with the movements and her hand extension. All of her dance is just beautiful to watch. Jump series there, split jump to a stag jump. Full turn. Good routine so far for Clara. Going into that dismount. Cartwheel one and a half, a stuck landing. She is definitely happy with that performance and so is her team. That looked like a senior right there. Yes, for sure. You can tell she's got that experience. Back over to the floor. This is Emma Silverman for Maryland. Nine six seven five on vault and a nine eight seven five on vault. Nine six seven five on bars. Nine eight seven five on vault. She goes into her first pass. That was a little bit of a combination there. Competing in the all around. Again, started off as a walk on. Earned a scholarship. He's in the all around lineup and then tore ACL and has come back from that. And so she feels better than ever. Which is good to hear. An injury like that is. Definitely not a fun recovery, so the fact that she's back out here competing all around is a great accomplishment. Getting ready for what I believe will be her last and final tumbling pass. A front handspring front double twist. And another good routine for Maryland. Osterhout had a 9675 prior to Silverman here. And next up on the beam is Emma Spence. Emma, of course, had the big summer with Team Canada, helped Canada win a bronze medal at the World Championships for the first time ever for Team Canada in gymnastics. Yes. I asked Heather Brink what she brings to the Husker Gymnastics Program, and she said consistency. For sure. And Emma competing on every single event that is definitely good for the Huskers. And here she is on her beam routine going into her series. Front aerial, back handspring, back handspring, and she nails it. She told me she had never watched NCAA Collegiate Gymnastics before she got here and competed. Oh my goodness. 
So that's the biggest difference. Now she just knows what this whole thing is about this year and love that it's so much about the team because it's not always like that at the international level. For sure. The NCAA versus Elite Gymnastics definitely has some differences. Emma finishes up her beam routine, round off one and a half dismount. Another good routine. She is showing just how dependable she is for the Huskers. 9.775 for Emma Silverman. Next up for Maryland is Alexa Rothenbusher. Getting ready for her first tumbling pass. A round off whip double back. You don't see that quite as often. Most athletes normally do that back handspring into their tumbling pass. So that was unique to see. How do you go about which tumbling passes each athlete does? Uh, it really just depends on the athlete. You know, some people are really good at doing those double flips and then other athletes might be better at twisting. It all really just depends on the athlete and what they're good at, what their preference is. Some fun music yes, for the Terrapins sure. in their routines. She is showing off her dance, getting ready for that next tumbling pass. And there she does round up a handspring double pike, slight chest down on that landing. Overall though, another hit routine. And that's Alexa. Rothenbusher, junior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Emma Spence with a 9825 with her routine on the beam. And this is Sophia McClellan. To anchor things on the beam, she was a beam specialist. She loves competing on the beam. Starting her routine off with a wolf turn. You see that she did two in a row there. Does it very nicely. One thing that I love about Sophia when she is on beam is how aggressive she is. You can see it with each and every skill that she does. She knows that she is going to hit it, which is so good to have while you're on the beam. Series there. Back handspring layout, step out, just a slight wobble. She told me the reason why this is her favorite. She feels the most in her element and the most calm. And she has fun on the beam, which not a lot of gymnasts say, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> those, for sure. I those think, sentiments with the beam. I think it shows, though. You can really see that in her performance, attacking her skills and being aggressive. Sophia's getting ready for her dismount. Back answering one and a half, a step on that landing. So here we go, anchoring things off on the floor for Marilyn Reese McClure. And we were told, get ready for a treat in this one. She always does themes in her routines. Last year it was an 80s, 90s hip hop. This year it's a 70s disco. Welcome to the disco, Kenzie. Ready to see it. And she starts her routine with a tuck double back. A great landing. She probably had to do some YouTube research on what disco even looks like. <laughs> Always good to see athletes showing off the routine. She's going into her second tumbling pass. Front layout, front one and a half there. It does look like she is having a good time out on the floor, enjoying her performance.
getting ready for that last final tumble pass. Great front layout, front full, and a good landing. Oh, that was fun. A great routine for Marilyn. She's definitely happy with that routine. So is her team. So 9-6-7-5 for Sophia McClellan. Last up on the beam for the, uh, the Huskers. Here goes Savannah in that exhibition spot. Doing some very beautiful dance to start off. Good full turn. And getting ready for her series. Backhand swing layout step out. Just lifts that front foot up off the beam. So we've seen before each beam routine, Heather Brink, head coach, giving a little pep talk. What mm -hmm. is she saying to the athletes? Well, it's a little specific to each athlete. You know, sometimes it's, just giving those cue words on certain skills. Other times, you know, just giving them, you know, you got it, telling them that they can do it and to go out there and have fun. I think that's something that's really stressed for that Nebraska team is to go out there and just do what they normally do. Try and do what they do in practice. And Savannah finishes up her beam routine there. A 9.875 for Reese McClure in that anchor spot for Maryland. So we have an exhibition routine here for the Terrapins. Starting off, going into that first tumbling pass. A front hand spring, front one and a half. Showing off her dance, you can see on the side, her team interacting with her a little bit, doing that dance that she's doing. It's always fun to see. I think it's always fun too. You can tell uh, which routines are the team's favorite too when you start <laughs> watching all of them perform. For sure, there she goes back one and a half front layout, good landing. Again, another good routine in that exhibition spot for Maryland. So meet status as we, before we head into the final rotation, Maryland 146, 975, and Nebraska 146, 275. I guess your big takeaways from that rotation three right there for both teams. Yeah, well, for Nebraska on beam, it was good to see that they hit six for six routines. And I think going into the floor, they, are really gonna wanna show off their performance. It's a home crowd, it should be a lot of fun and to really show off those routines. And then for Maryland on the floor, we saw some really good floor routines, controlled landings, and like they were having a good time. So next up for them is gonna be the beam and that's always a challenge for any team. So to really focus in on that event and um, you know, try and hit six for six routines there too. All right, so we will head to the fourth and a final rotation here tonight. Coming up, you're watching Nebraska Gymnastics here on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back inside the Devaney Center. The crowd is getting fired up for this fourth and final rotation as Nebraska moves to the floor and Maryland over to the beam alongside Kenzie Roby. I'm Jessica Cootie. We had a big time dance break going on with some pink pom poms, some, some girls up in the crowd. They were getting after it. Yeah. It's always going to be fun and then pump you up as you head into the final rotation. Yeah, definitely. And a great crowd here. It should be good to see during those uh, floor routines, getting that crowd interaction. And that always helps the athlete, too, to hear the crowd and hear them clapping and getting excited. So, so current overall team score, 146.975 for Maryland, 146.275 for Nebraska. And we haven't talked much about this. Uh, first check of this, the all-around between the, the three gymnasts competing in that. Emma Spence leading the way right now, 29-5. And then um, Emma Silverman just behind her, 29-3-5. And then Sophia McClellan with 29-0. So kind of a tight battle there to, to close things out. Yeah, definitely. And it'll all kind of come down to this last and final rotation. Definitely between Emma Spence and um, Emma Silverman there. So Heather Brink had told me before the season opener that this was a big emphasis for this team. They wanted to really up the performance value on their floor routines and feel like they've got some fun routines. They throw the bones. They say either go Big Red or go Skurs in every single routine, uh, trying to get the crowd involved, as you just were talking about. Yeah, that's definitely one thing to look out for in every single routine. So Katie Kinuman, Kinuman, Kinuman will be leading things off for Nebraska on the floor and on the beam for Maryland will be Alexis Rubio, the grad senior. And we had talked a lot about Maryland and how they had made it to the postseason last year. And we were talking with uh, Brett Nell again at the, before the media, talking about what we felt like what we did at the end of last season was propelling us setting up for what we wanted to do this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always good to kind of build going into that next season. I think that a lot of teams really strive to do that. Especially with so much experience and familiar faces in that lineup. For sure. It definitely helps to have those returners to be able that they've already had the experience to kind of get out there and get things going. And there was that triple series there. Back answering, back answering, layout, step out. Going into that leap pass, a switch leap, straddle half. Going into dismount, round off one and a half, hop forward on the landing there. All right, so here is Katie Knuman leading things off for Nebraska. Again, this is uh, one of the changes to the lineup because this has been Asia Hall that's led things off for the Huskers so far this season on, on the floor. Yeah, and one thing, Katie has been in the floor lineup before. She was in and out of the lineup last year, so she does have some experience. Going into her first tumbling pass now. A double pike and a good landing. One thing the judges are looking for on those landings is to be in control, so you want to stay on the floor, you don't want to have any steps, major steps back. Second pass, a front layout, front full. There you see there the team chanting the Go Big Red in her routine. Pass. 
again, the judge is looking for that full split in the air, and Katie's going into her last tumbling pass now. Back one and a half front layout and a good landing. How about that to lead things off for the Huskers? Yeah, a great routine. Katie should be very happy with that. Do you feel a little sense of pride? Because I was a freshman, right, when you were a senior? Yes, for sure. You know, it's always good to see underclassmen getting out there and hitting their routines and doing their job. So I had told you guys wrong. We had Silverman leading things off for Maryland with a 9675. This is Alexis Rubio here. Getting some changes to their lineup without Elizabeth DeBarberry in a couple of their events today. And that was a unique skill there. You saw her do a standing front tuck to a back handspring. She made it look very easy, but that is a difficult skill to do. Jump series there. Unfortunately, she did have a fall. Maryland has had both of their first two meets on the road. Going into that dismount. Cartwheel one and a half, so a good finish to the routine. Here we see that dismount again, that cartwheel back one and a half. So Katie, Katie, can you Knewman had led things off for Nebraska with a 9.775. This is Hallie Rourke of Waverly, Nebraska. Hallie's getting ready to go into that first tumbling pass. Unfortunately, does go out of bounds. So one thing to note, when athletes are competing here in the arena, sometimes the floor can be a little bouncier than what they typically train on. So, you know, it comes with that experience and it is early on in the season. You know, you gotta get used to that floor and trying to find those landings. A lot of times too, just in front of the crowd and adrenaline, for probably sure. adds to it, right? Oh, it, it definitely does add to it. Back double pike for her next pass. She was able to find the landing on that one. A good leap pass from Hallie. So unfortunately, that will be a deduction for going out of bounds on that first pass. But that last pass we see here, that solid landing on our double pike. Alexis Rubio for Maryland fell off the beam, had a 9-1-2-5. So up next for them now is Kylie Herringer, senior out of Ramsey, New Jersey. Try to get things back going for Maryland. What's that like coming back after you've seen a teammate fall? Oh, it's it's definitely a challenging. You know, sometimes though the athlete won't necessarily see it if they're in their own bubble and if they're up next, you know, you're kind of trying to focus on your routine and getting yourself ready, but Good Adds a little bit more there. pressure it, though, right? It definitely does, especially for the rest of the lineup.
And a good single skill there, front toss to a beat jump. And again, I told you guys wrong again. That was Reese, this is Reese McClure for Maryland. Finishes up her routine. You know, it's good to have that hit routine coming after a fall. It definitely helps settle in the rest of the lineup after that. This is Kylie Perringer for Nebraska. Kylie does a great job at showing off her floor routine. We can hear the crowd clapping along. Going into her first tumbling pass. Tuck, double back. And one thing to note, Kylie is capable of doing a double layout on the floor. She's coming back from some ankle injuries. Possibly see that later on in the season. There's a nice second pass, back one and a half front layout. This is a new floor routine for her too, which she's loving. Yeah, definitely showing that off there. She's had a 9-9 on this event four times in her career. Getting ready for her last tumbling pass. Crowd is flapping along. A double pike. A good routine from Kylie for the Huskers. Reese McClure had a 9.825 for Maryland on the beam. It's a good bounce back score. Following the fall, Victoria Gatzendorfer up next. A club teammate of Kinsey Davis. Here she goes, looks like she's getting ready for her series. There we see another triple series, just a slight arm movement at the end there. Solid full turn. Going into her jump series. Looked a, a little questionable on the connection there. That's definitely going to be up to the judges on if they will give that connection to her or not. Going into that gainer dismount there. A little hop on the landing, but she seems to be happy with that routine. 9-8 for Kylie Perringer before Sophia McClellan coming up here for Nebraska. Here on the floor, we'll really see how Sophia just loves to be a performer. You'll get to see that through her dance. Going into her first tumbling pass now. A punch front double twist. Now going into that second tumbling pass. A round off back one and a half front layout. Good so far. There's the go big red. This 
see a smile there. That's always good to see. Now Sophia will be going into her last tumbling pass. A front one and a half into another jump finish off her routine. A great routine for the Huskers from Sophia McClelland. Here's Maddie Kmorski, freshman in Pennsylvania. And she has the potential. We were told that if she delivers her routine, like she does in practice, she's mm -hmm. capable of, of putting up a 10. And that was a gorgeous mount that she had there. Going into her series, a one-handed back handspring layout step out. That is extremely difficult to do, only having one hand on the beam. She did it beautifully. Front aerial, also solid. Jump series there. Beautiful p split position in the air. You can definitely tell that she hits that 180 degree split. And the ring jump. Full turn, just the slightest of wobbles. She'll be getting ready for her dismount now. Round off back one and a half to a stuck landing. Overall, that was a beautiful routine. See, you can definitely see the potential, right? Yes. You were smiling sure. at her. You're, you love the balance beam. You love that routine. I, that was very pretty. So before Maddie for Maryland, 9675 for Victoria Gatzendorfer. Up next here is Emma Spence. You can see her hair has gone from the bun into the ponytail. She's going to play. This is a burlesque theme floor routine, and she loves it. She said it's her favorite routine she's ever had. Floor routine. Excited to see. I think this is a great opportunity for Emma Spence to really show off her personality and have some fun out there on the floor. Again, because not something that you typically do in that intercollegiate or international exactly. gymnastics, right? First tumbling pass to kick things off. And she is definitely showing off her dance. Now, here she's going to do that wolf turn again. And that also helps fulfill the dance requirement that is required on floor. Elite pass, she does that beautifully. Going into her last tumbling pass, double pike, and an amazing landing. That will be a great routine from Emma Spence. Sophie McClellan had a 9.85 before Emma Spence. Just saw there that double pike, a good landing. Nine eight seven five for Maddie Komorski on the beam from Maryland. And anchoring things here for the Terrapins is Josephine Kogler. So again, this last routine is going to be really important because they did have that fall earlier on in the lineup. So going into her series now, triple series, and does it beautifully. Front walk over there. The team score has tightened up. It definitely has. We could come down to these last <laughs> two routines here it, that we're watching. It can. The 
Leap Series. Very solid routine so far. Taking things nice and patient. Gainer full dismount. She looks to be very happy with that routine. And Josephine Kogler hits when the Terrapins had to have it, right? Definitely, when the pressure is on. So a 9-9 for Emma Spence. Now we have Martina Komen on floor. The coaches were talking about just how hard she's worked and had injuries. And for her to hit her routine last week is really special. She was fired up. Yeah, that always adds to the confidence. So hoping to see that here as she gets her routine going. Going into the first tumbling pass. This is a full in. That is a double back with a full twist. Definitely one of the harder passes that we've seen tonight. Elite pass there. Martina is also a, another one that really shows off her personality in her floor team, which is always fun to see. Going into her last tumbling pass. Back one and a half front layout. Controls the landing on that one. Ooh, that smile. A good routine from Martina. So 9.85 from Kogler in that anchor spot for Maryland. So they will be able to drop that 9.125, that fall there earlier on in that lineup. Yeah, that's always something that you're looking to do. You never want to have to count a fall towards your team score because a fall is five tenths. So it's always good to be able to replace that score. And we've got an exhibition routine on the beam for Maryland. This will be the final exhibition, the final routine of the night. Switch side there, good position. Going into that gainer full dismount again and a stuck landing. Great exhibition routine for Maryland. The final score for the Huskers, 9725 from Martina Comine. So the final score ends up being final team score, 195. 875 for Maryland and 195 325 for Nebraska. And you and I had talked uh, in the commercial break that not uh, ideal what they wanted to do on the bars, but they responded in a, in a good way on beam and floor. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, moving forward, just really trying to focus in on those details. So landings on every event, um, body positions, those straight legs pointed toes, all of that definitely adds up and contributes to that final team score. Emma spins with a 9-9 on the vault, so she takes the vault title. The bars, it will be a tie for Maryland uh, with a 9-8, Elizabeth DeBarberry and Victoria Gatzendorfer. And on the beam, Maddie Komorski will take that title, 9-8-7-5 for Maryland. And on the floor, Emma Spence with a 9-9 and all around is also Emma Spence with a 39-4. That is a great all-around score for Emma Spence. All right, so big takeaways from tonight. Yeah, well, I think we saw some 
solid performances. Another great meet for Maryland. A good team score uh, and another away meet. And overall, a good meet for Nebraska. I think that moving forward again, they're definitely just going to want to focus in on those details and try and, um, yeah, focus in on the details and build that team score, just counting every little tenth that they can get. So again, final score here from inside the Danny Center, 195-875. Maryland wins it tonight over Nebraska, 195-325. Next up for the Huskers, they'll be on the road at Illinois a week from tonight, January 28th. The next home meet coming up February 6th. It's a Monday night against Iowa, 8 o'clock. All right, well, first time. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. I had so much fun. How about this perspective for being down there, out there on the floor? It's definitely different. I, I really did enjoy it though. I had a great time seeing some great gymnastics from both teams. All right, for Kenzie Roby, I'm Jessica Hootie. Thanks so much to our great Husker Vision crew for all the help on this one and thank you guys for watching. Have a great night.
Thank you for your continued support of Nebraska Women's Gymnastics. We love Lord. 